Welcome to Animals at Work, where animals work. All over the planet, there are millions of animals that have jobs. Oh! This is the show that brings you the funniest, coolest, and most bizarre animals at work. Coming up. Ginny the donkey has a very important client to impress. Rio the delivery dog needs to stop eating the product. And our fanimals go up against a talented hawk in a pigeon clearing challenge. But now it's showtime. Who's a pretty uh -huh. boy then? Who's got such a lovely tall long neck and beautiful eyelashes? Ooh. And a lovely smile and has really got a nice neckline. <laughs> me, that's right. <laughs> Don't turn your back on me, I'm just kidding. Ooh. I was only having a bit of a giraffe laugh with you, get it? I'm not only am I handsome, I'm funny. <laughs> First we're off to Devon in England. Meet Ginny, a five-year-old donkey with a desire to lend a hand. Or a hoof. Ginny is on the fast track to becoming a therapy rider who will help children with their coordination and confidence. If she can impress a visiting VIP. Name Zoe. I'm really excited about meeting the new donkey. Zoe, who is deaf in one ear and has trouble with her balance, could become the first client Ginny will ever get to have on her back. And if she makes a success of that, her dreams of becoming a qualified therapy donkey will be one step closer to becoming a reality. But before Ginny gets the chance to work with Zoe, she has to first pass her basic training. She's undergone some training uh, for the last six months, um, doing various different activities to build her up to being a riding therapy donkey. Therapy donkey classes will show Ginny how to teach young riders to learn balance, improve their movement, and help them gain trust. Donkeys, in particular, are really yeah. good for this because of their quiet nature and they seem to have ability to relate to how you're feeling. Not every donkey at this sanctuary is chosen to train as a therapy donkey. To be one of the elite, a donkey must be calm, cool, and confident. Skills that Ginny is working on. I'm still. Whoa, hold your horses. Uh, I mean, donkeys there, Ginny. You need to calm down. That pushy stuff isn't going to work with your first client, Zoe. She's been riding before and knows what sort of behavior to expect. Zoe's regular donkey is Whistle. Hello, Whistle. And before he lets Ginny take the reins with one of his favorite clients, he is going to help Ginny with her training. Ginny will do what he says because not only is Whistle a more senior donkey therapist, he is also Ginny's best friend. When they first met, they bonded straight away and have remained really close friends ever since. A close friendship like this is normal for donkeys. They are very sociable and don't like being alone. If they can't find another donkey, they will quite happily move in with a goat. That's weird. And that's not the only weird donkey fact. Donkeys have such powerful memories that they can recognize an old donkey pal up to 25 years later. Woo, that long memory can help a lot since donkeys can live to be over 50 years old. And they have such huge ears that they can hear the call of another donkey from 60 miles away. And Ginny will need to use those big ears to listen to what Whistle has to say. He's used to working with Zoe and is the best choice to teach Ginny how to tackle her main three lessons. On, These Ginny. lessons will take place in this arena where Zoe usually rides. Ginny must learn to follow the leader, pole weave, and ignore distractions. Ginny won't be able to take Zoe on a ride until she passes these tests. They are essential skills for a professional donkey therapist to have. Time for training! Ginny needs to follow Whistle around the arena. 
He is the very model of a calm donkey, and that is what Ginny needs to learn if she is to pass the first test. This walk must become absolutely routine to Ginny, so that when she has Zoe on board, she will always know exactly where to step. Ginny is really concentrating hard. This is no time to be fidgety! Good, Ginny! You're really paying attention! Ginny's learnt quite a bit from Whistle. She's got a lot of confidence from him. Let's see if she's as good at the pole weave. Ginny must be able to move around these poles without changing her stride. This is important to help riders improve their balance. Okay, Ginny, around one more pole and... Ginny, you clever donkey. You just cruised through your second test. Finally, it's time for the distraction test. What we're going to do is start with some noisy toys, which we would use in a therapy session. Quite often, the children are asked to drop them in a bucket, so it's really important they get used to the noise and the sensation of it. To pass, Ginny must not react to the ball, and Ginny can be easily distracted. You'd better try hard here, Ginny. If you fail, your career as a donkey therapist could be in tatters. As you can see, she's not too bothered at all. She's not even reacting in her face, so that's really good. Well done, Ginny! You passed all the tests and made Whistle proud. Now there is only one thing left to do. Get Zoe on your back and take her for a ride. Later we'll find out, will Ginny be able to impress her visiting VIP and become a real therapy donkey? Or will she crumble under the pressure? Walk on, Ginny. Good go. And now, those kids who love animals, it's the... Animals! Yes! And here they are, our animal detectives. There's Alfie, Jade, and Tatiana. Their challenge is to find out who is the best pigeon scarer. Is it Fanimal or Animal? Meet Ted. He's a mixed-breed falcon, and he's with Boss Carl. This school has been plagued by pigeons. They always poo on the roof. And no one likes a school covered in pigeon poop. They need persuading to move. The school's tried everything, and now they've asked us to come and scare them away. But who will be best at bothering those birds? Will it be the Fanimals? With a complete set of very noisy musical instruments. Or professional pigeon scarer Ted. First up to give them some tweetment, it's Jade on the Triangle. That's some good noise, Megan, but not enough to scare away pigeons. I don't think any of them flew away. Second, it's Alfie. Will he ruffle some feathers? Okay, that's certainly quite a racket. Yeah, oh dear. Hang on, oh, hang on a minute. I, I think you've attracted two pigeons there. <laughs> The feather forecast is not good for the Fanimals. Alfie can stop. stop. <laughs> it's all down to Tatiana. Can't she drum up some attention from those bird brain birds? Really hard. That's one. And another. They got two off the roof, so I went pretty well. Yeah, we've already beaten this falcon. Oh, you think so? Now it's Ted's turn. And Fanimals, he does this for a living. Ted the Professional has come with a full kit of tools. First, a hood to calm him down. Next, his bells. The reason why he's got a bell is when he flies up behind me so I can hear him at all times, so I don't have to constantly look at him. How fast is he? Ted can range of speeds around 150 miles an hour to 200 miles an hour. 200 miles per hour? <laughs> Making falcons the fastest animal on the planet. It's not looking good for the fanimals. So what you'll see is you'll fluff, Go to the toilet, and then he's ready to fly. Ready? Ready, here's the fluff. And here's the toilet, and off he goes! Wow! Wow! Look at the pigeons fly! Oh, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, yeah, whatever. He's got loads of pigeons to leave the school roof! Fanimal's got two pigeons. 
I think it's fairly obvious to say that the best pigeon scarer is Ted the Falcon! Well done, Ted. Ted is one amazing pigeon scarer. Next, we're off to the sunny shores of Santa Teresa, Costa Rica. Say hello to Rio, a lovable two-year-old surfer sidekick who just can't get enough of the beach. Rio spends his carefree days frolicking in the sand, chasing rocks, and hanging out with Marguerite. Morning. While she surfs and works at her beachside cafe. Oh, look what he's got. Oh, oh. Recently, Marguerite's beach cafe business has become really popular. And in the height of summer, it gets too busy for her to handle all the work on her own. So, after months of just watching her, Rio is about to join the firm. There are a lot of hungry surfers and swimmers out there who need Rio's help. But unfortunately for Rio, that means his never-ending holiday is over. He is starting work as a sandwich delivery dog. Mario! This playboy needs to start supporting his flash lifestyle of fast cars. Hot dog! And tasty treats. This was a big change for Rio. Since arriving on Marguerite's doorstep as a stray, Rio has lived a life of leisure with his sister Ollie and his brother Nugget. But there's something special about Rio. He is the fastest dog in Santa Teresa. He can go about 35 kilometers per hour on the beach, so I'm trying to have him be my assistant to the delivery man. Rio is so fast that if he can master the art of the delivery, he'll cut Marguerite's delivery time in half. Marguerite has been working on Rio's job skills, but so far, her attempt at training Rio haven't exactly worked. We're having some initial training problems. I've been trying for a little while to have him come back with sandwiches and things like that, but it's just a bit of malfunction time at the moment. But Marguerite is not giving up. She is going to see if he can pull a delivery off when it really matters and have him learn on the job. Come on. Good luck, Rio. Sit, 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 You're gonna sit. need it. Okay, time to deliver some food, Rio. It's Rio's first shift. We're about to see if he will deliver a light sandwich that we've made for him. So we'll bring him down, put the sandwich around his neck, and, and see if he'll deliver the food. There are hungry surfers waiting for their lunch out there, Rio. Can you work out what you're supposed to do and make your first successful delivery? Rio, where are you going? Get back here, it's the wrong way, Rio! Rio, that's the wrong way! Oh no, you've just ruined the sandwich! Right, so maybe Rio isn't quite warmed up to this whole delivery thing yet. Let's see how it goes the second time around. Don't want to get the sandwich wet. Where did he go? Oh no! Rio, you can't eat all the product? You are gonna get fired before you even get started. How are we gonna give this to somebody who's eaten the whole thing? Come on, Come on Rio. Uh -oh, Marguerite on, believes right in you. Your food's on the way. Okay, this is looking better. Yeah, bingo. Mmm. Rio. There it is. There's your sandwich, Char. Hey, hey, Rio, you got there, but with Marguerite's help, and she's got there, there before you. you. You're supposed well to be saving your time with your speedy that, deliveries. Rio actually just had his first successful delivery, with some assistance of a sort, but he was okay. I think we did pretty well. This is our last delivery, and you're gonna have to be successful so I can be very proud of you. Come on, Rio. You've got one last shot at this. Can you remember what you need to do? Linga! Linga! There's a target, Rio. The surfer is hungry. Go get it! There's a little hesitation. No, Rio, no more swimming till the job is done! But wait! Hooray! You got it, Rio! And look at that! 
Close. You even Boy. got a tip. Real great you. delivery. Well done. Thank you. How was your sandwich? Very good, thank you. Right. We can go home. Rio's completed his first Come shift. On. He took his time, but he managed to make a perfect delivery. A few more like that, and it won't be long before Marguerite promotes you to full-time yeah, delivery dog. What do you think about that? Normal service has been interrupted as we head over to breaking news. Good evening, I'm Johnny Newsman, and this is Animal News. Tonight's top story, human scientists discover super snake. Scientists in South America have discovered the fossilized remains of a snake they believe to have lived over 60 million years ago. They estimate that the snake was as long as a school bus. It would have weighed about 2,500 pounds and looked really, really scary. Take a look at our artist's impression. <laughs> that was tonight's main story. Time to go over to our food correspondent, Gordon Hamsey, for his latest review of the food in his trough. How's the grub, Gordon? <laughs> Wow, what an insight. Thanks, Gordon. That was Animal News. Thanks for watching and stay firm. And now we're off to Cornville in the United States. This is Riley, the chairman of the board for a company that produces these giant play balls for horses. Riley was awarded this prestigious position because as a young horse, he was the inspiration behind these products. Are you ready to go to work? Time to test some toys, huh? Riley came to the ranch as a two-week-old orphan. He's just been a goofball from, from day one. No. He has the biggest sense of humor and the biggest personality of any horse I've ever met. Lucky for Riley, his new home believed that to keep horses happy, they should be given toys to play with. But it wasn't long before Riley's bosses, Kenny and Lisa, noticed how rough he was on his toys. We kept trying to buy various balls and toys, but he played so rough that he would end up laying on top of it and then biting, and all the other balls would pop. Riley's rough play inspired Kenny and Lisa. And so the revolutionary play ball was born. Playing with these balls helps horses to stay stress-free and relaxed. It's important they are high-quality balls, and that's where Riley's real work starts. Riley must check the fun factor, strength, and safety of these balls before they are shipped out to horses all over the world. The one thing we don't want to have is sad horses when their balls pop. Helping Riley out are Elvis, Cooper, Simon, Rebel, Bam Bam, and Smokey. Yeah. The dream team of horse toy testing. All of them have their own personalities. Riley is definitely the CEO, so he keeps everybody in line. Well, then maybe someone should tell Riley that Cooper is peeing on the job again. Ew, gross! Each morning, Riley rounds up the rest of the herd and his bosses drop off some of their newest creations. Ready to play? They try a blue ball. But something is off with this one. Oops. Seems like it as much to you, buddy. Simon the donkey takes Riley aside and gives him an earful. The chairman has a tough decision to make. Riley has to deliver the bad news. This ball just won't work. Sorry, Kenny, it's back to the drawing board. We have one more ball for Riley to test. Let's try another one. They kick it around. Test its tough. And now it's decision time. Riley talks to the team. Hmm. And this one is good. Great job, Riley. 
With his winning personality, leadership qualities, and keen attention to detail, Riley now enjoys an incredibly stable career that most horses would only dream about. It's not just today that animals have had jobs. In fact, history reveals that in the past, they've had even more amazing jobs than today. And here are those history's heroes! Hello there! I am Professor John Bumbleman, the greatest living animal historian that has ever lived, ever will live, or hath ever lived, ever! I am a genius. No. It's not just in modern times that animals have had all the best jobs. In fact, they have been hard at it for as far back as anyone can remember. Let's meet the animals who have made a career as extreme travelers. Our first extreme traveler with a high-flying career is Icarus the Second. He was the first pig to fly. Icarus the Second worked with John Theodore Cuthbert Moore Brabazon. That's a mouthful. On a fine autumn day in 1909, John Theodore took Icarus for a joy ride over the Isle of Sheppey. And Icarus II flew into Porky Legend. You'd think Icarus could have had a first class seat for such a lofty job. But no, this little pig flew in a, a wicker waste paper basket hanging from the wing strut. What a rubbish way to treat the first flying pig. Our next amazing traveler had an even worse place to sit. Yogi the Black Bear flew on supersonic planes, flying faster than the speed of sound. At 343 meters in one second, 12 miles a minute, and over 745 miles an hour. Woo! But far from getting the best seat on the plane, Yogi's job was to check the ejector seat. <laughs> but the animal who deserves the history's most extreme traveler accolade is... Stop that! I'm trying to read a story here. Yes. The most extreme traveler is Ham the chimpanzee. Ham the astro chimp went where no human had gone before, into space. On January 31st, 1961, Ham blasted off from Cape Canaveral. Almost immediately, there was a hitch. The flight path was a degree higher than it should have been and rising fast. Because of the high flight angle, Ham had flown 157 miles above Earth, higher than the planned target of 115 miles. Luckily, Ham was safe in his spacesuit, and for over six minutes, he experienced weightlessness. Ham returned safely to Earth, and for all his hard work, he was rewarded with just an apple, half an orange, and a handshake. Realizing there was no money in the space travel business, Ham left NASA and went on to have a successful Hollywood career starring in the film Evil Knievel. And that concludes this week's History's Heroes. <laughs> and finally, we're heading back to Devon in England. Earlier, we met Ginny, a five-year-old trainee donkey therapist who has been preparing to take her very first client, Zoe, for a ride. It's a really big day for Ginny, but I'm sure that everything will go well. She's done well in her training, so really confident of her. Walk on, Jenny. Good girl. Jenny's first client, eight-year-old Zoe, is deaf in one ear, which affects her balance and makes her just a little unsteady. It makes me um, feel wobbly. Whistle has helped Zoe learn how to balance herself, but today she might be ready to take a huge leap of confidence and work with Jenny instead. This partnership could be a real dream come true for Ginny, who wants more than anything to become a qualified donkey therapist. The first person riding her, that's really, really exciting. Ginny must be one relaxed and reliable donkey. If she gets nervous, then that could make Zoe nervous, which could make Ginny nervous, which could... Oh, gosh, Ginny! You'll be under more pressure today than ever before! Stay calm. The big moment has finally arrived. Will Zoe give Ginny a chance? 
tension's terrible. You can cut it with a knife. Ginny, please. Hey, Zoe has chosen Ginny. That's a very Keep promising up. start. <sighs> now, Ginny, you just need to get the course right and help Zoe improve her balance. I'm really, really excited. Ginny must walk Zoe calmly around the arena just as she did in the follow the leader lesson. Weave through the poles just as she did in the training and she will need to ignore any distractions. Sounds simple, but this will be the very first time Ginny has ever had a client on her back. Ginny must stay focused and calm so Zoe can stay focused and calm so Ginny can stay focused and... Oh yeah, good luck Ginny! Walk on Ginny! First up, follow the leader. Remember, Ginny must set a steady pace so Zoe can get used to her. Ginny did great! This is the first time she has ever had a client on her back and she set a lovely calm pace for Zoe. I think she's ready to try the next step. Next, the pole weave. She has to stay calm and I have to try not to wobble. Ginny must carefully weave through the poles, stopping to let Zoe retrieve the toys. Ginny must keep a very steady pace if Zoe's to keep her balance. She's standing really steady. I think that went really, really well. Ginny, have you been practicing in your spare time? That is great! Whistle must be so proud of his protege. <laughs> Finally, Ginny needs to let Zoe move a ball above her head and place it in a bucket and not get distracted. Yay, well done. Fantastic! Ginny is totally focused. Ginny, you did it! You passed all your tests! After such a successful day, Zoe trusts Ginny enough to go on a little run. It's like fun after all the training that they've done. <laughs> Woohoo! I think she's done a very, very good job today. I'd like to come back and ride her again sometime. Thank you, Ginny. Well done, Ginny! You worked really hard. Looks like your future career as a donkey therapist is in the bag. I just love working with animals. They're so wonderful. It's like being so close to nature. I'm right here. I'm feeling nature right next to me. It's fantastic. And cut! Somebody get me out of here. This giraffes have snotted all over me while they're eating. It's disgusting. It's like being in a trough in some bad restaurant. Caroline, get my car. I've had enough. I'm out of here.